Ready to go? Ready. All right. Uh, so today I have with me a, a great friend, Andrew Edland of Row to Fit. Andrew, how are you doing this afternoon, my friend? I'm good. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing good. Uh, I, I, I find it very um, fitting that we are having a discussion uh, about rowing, and I'm not surprised to see a rower sitting right behind you. Yeah, that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a name for your rower? Uh, Bridezilla. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I, I think, I don't know what's more fascinating, the fact that it is behind you right now or that it is out of your car. Yeah, it's 50-50, I guess, you know, it depends. I, I got right now the, uh, you know, for this, for our discussion here, the uh, the setup and all that, but typically it's in the backseat of my car going from client to client is uh, the typical location of Miss Bridezilla here. Of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um random question just popped into my head do you remember the the when we met like how long ago was it like 20 was it 16 15 it was a couple months after uh your gym moved from the old location to the new location oh it's 2014 then holy yeah, 2014. smokes yeah, it yeah. Was, i think i started there with you uh mm -hmm. september of 2014 september october i believe i want to say yeah, it's so small. seven, eight, nine years this year. Yeah. Almost a decade, man. That is really cool. Time five. <laughs> yeah. So for for those of for those that are watching slash listening, whatever it is, the my uh defining moment of of uh, meeting Andrew, I'll never forget, is <clears throat> you telling me that uh in the back of your car, your back seat of your car, at the time you're driving a gold Toyota Camry, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Like a 1990s-ish, 1994 you know? Toyota okay. Camry. Yep. Uh, with Bridezilla in the back seat. Uh, always. <laughs> and I remember you telling me that you had like just this um, undying passion for rowing. Um, and I didn't believe it until you, you literally took me out there and showed me that this yeah. rower just goes around with you everywhere. Rowing officially was my first love. That's all. <laughs> Does Jessica know this? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. She deals with it. She's accepted it. She's like, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Where... I, also remember, I also remember you because at the time you were early on with your gym also, and you were, you were uh, assembling your, your fleet of rowing machines. And you're like, if there's any time where you want to get rid of or sell your machine, I, um, I'll be willing to uh, buy it from you. I'm like, I will sell my children before I sell my <laughs> children. I do remember that. <laughs> I do recall that. You're oh like, my oh, goodness. You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this guy's not giving it up and there yeah, it still no. stands. <laughs> Same one right there. Yep. Okay. So what, what is your story, if you will, with rowing or your history and, and where the love for it comes from? Uh, my, it all started actually before I started rowing. Uh, by the 92 Olympics, uh, I believe they were in Atlanta, uh, when I saw rowing on TV and before I even saw it firsthand or face to face or whatever, I fell in love with it right there. I knew my, my number one criteria of the college that I would choose to go to had a crew team. And then from there, I would decide my major. <laughs> you had your priorities in line. <laughs> That's it. Yep. So 1992, I decided I was going to row before even touching a cruise shell. Uh, graduated college in 95. I uh, went to SUNY Maritime, which is a college like in the New York, New York State mm -hmm. uh, University, State University system. And SUNY Maritime is in Bronx, New York, right under the Throgs Neck Bridge. Mm -hmm. And it's right waterfront property. And that's... Uh, the first time I sat in a boat was uh, September 1995. So from there, I just, and there were people on the team who thought I rode in high school. I had any, I had some, because I was so into it, thought yeah. I had prior experience. I'm like, no, dude, this is my first time. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but I know I love it and I'm here. But I know I love it. That's it. Yep. But then, and then from there, I, I rode four years in college. Uh, my fifth year in college, I, I coached a little bit because I took the five-year plan. 
So coached a little bit my last year. And then from there, I've just been doing mostly club and recreational stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. I've rode in college everywhere from Mission Bay in San, Di San Diego to uh, head of the Charles in Boston and multiple places in between. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's kind of it. At that time, um, not that I'm saying you're old, but like at that time, no, yeah, it was decades you... ago. I rode longer than I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good way to look at it, actually. Did um, I imagine you said upstate New York? So, um, was land training like on a rowing machine, like the concept two? Was that like the land training that you guys did? For most of it, I mean, uh, a lot of it, and then also a lot of it was running. Uh, Mm -hmm. Might as well have been a cross country team. Uh, the amount of running that a typical college uh, crew team, you know, does if it's rainy or if there's any kind of chop in the water whatsoever, if you're not able to get on the water, either morning practice or afternoon practice, you're running or you're on the rowing machine. Or we're also do uh, strength training kind of stuff like off yeah. like in, the, in the weight room circuits, uh, more. Uh, longer 20, 30 minute, you know, kind of circuit training uh, mm -hmm. type stuff is what we did in college. Gotcha. But yeah, a majority of it was grinding it out on the rowing machine. The yeah. erg, erg was uh, evil, yeah. <laughs> that was the friend, that was the friend you never knew you, you wanted to have. Yeah, Bridezilla for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So bring me a little bit more current. So we, we kind of briefly talked about our history of like you coming to the gym, but yep. you, I didn't even know this, that you said you had already been coaching, you know, like in your last year of college. Um, obviously you came to us at a certain point, you started coaching with us, but you really, I mean, it was apparent from day one that like your specialty was going to be rowing. Um, and so kind of catch me up to, to that point And then now. So for when I was at the gym, the uh, whenever there was a rowing wad or anything like that going on, uh, it always seemed like people were would in the class would ask me questions of like how do you do this or like what's the better way or I really tried not to act like a know it all. Like mm -hmm. when I would see someone horrifically moving on the on the erg, I'd be like I I try not to you know. Just look, just look away, right. look away. Right. I'm like, all right, that's how they do it. That's cool, whatever. But it, but then it came to the point where my times were better and I obviously looked like I moved better on the rowing machine compared to everyone else. So then the uh, the other athletes in the class at the 530 class there were asking like, so how do I look here? How do I look there? It was a quick like 30, 60 second, you know, uh, just a quick refresher or tips or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, they're like, Andrew, you really should, you should coach this. Or like, you know, do a class or do something with at the, at the gym there. So that's when I started looking into uh, getting my side, my, my actual certification for indoor rower through You Can Row 2. Uh, it's a concept two certified program where uh, that's where I got my certification through. And then with them, I also showed interest in becoming a master instructor with You Can mm -hmm. Row 2. So with that, I uh, with that additional process of going through extra training and uh, they like the way how I row and they like the way how I explain how to row. I kind of have a different way of explaining it. And it's not like the typical cookie cutter way of teaching people how to row. So I kind of like put my own little spin on stuff and mm -hmm. sometimes controversial, but that's okay, you know? But the, so that's where, so you can row too, then asked me to be a master instructor. So I helped them out with pretty much instructing their, uh, their certified instructors. So helping out with certifying yeah. just uh, everyone off the street of who wants to get certified also. So that's, it's kind of grown from there. And then from there, I've also done side stuff where the, where the road to fit kind of, blossomed from it's just my it's like kind of like everything all added, added together with the uh, uh doing the clinics and stuff that i've done at your gym and also the you can row two stuff it's just all of that combined and uh also friends from college and friends from friends where my wife uh jessica would be like uh some she would have another parent or whatever with, with one of their kids being interested in rowing 
And she would just, you know, word of mouth say, oh, my husband knows how to row. He, he's good at uh, explaining and like teaching. Like, so I would spend like an hour or whatever with before Road to Fit happened or uh, was born or whatever. I, uh, mm-hmm. I would spend time with that. And even the kids would be like, they'd be thankful and the parents would get back to me and be like, they're, they're, uh, uh, times and their uh, the way how they're they've progressed just by the hour long that I've spent with them. Uh, kind of all everyone. It was pretty much I got different signs from different areas from different points of my life saying you should do this. Yeah, uh, officially. So that's where the road of fit kind of accumulated from. And so yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. So. Okay. There's, there's a couple of different questions that I have about that one. Um, and, and I want you to elaborate on this because I don't think a lot of people know this. I certainly didn't until you explained it to me, but when you get, um, uh, offered by concept two to, you know, work with them or work for them, basically to be like the master instructor, like you were talking about, it's not like a, a lot of other certifications or courses where it's, you know, you show up, you attend and you check a box and you get the certification or you do the online course and you get the certification. You, you had to like go through a extensive process where you're filming stuff, you're submitting it, they're grading it. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, that's, that's just for the certification, not just, that's not even for the master instructor. instructor oh, specific. okay. So just for the, like, if you were, if you want to get certified to be a concept two instructor, uh, one of the, one of the, the companies out there that, that provide that certification is you can row to. So what they initially do is they put you through, it's like a, a usually on a weekend, it's a two day course where you show mm-hmm. up to what, wherever, wherever in the country that they do this course to, they put you through pretty much everything how to row 101 to, you know, graduating of becoming of a proper indoor rower. Uh, they teach you all the tricks and everything and how to move. And, and you do uh, uh, also role play kind of stuff where you need to like, like uh, be the coach. And then you're coaching mm-hmm. one of the other people in the class there. And they'll, the master instructor who's attending will uh critique and give tips and things like that so it's a two-day it's almost like the crossfit level one okay. kind of a course where uh, uh it's a two-day thing and you got the coaches there like you have got the, the master instructors there teaching their certification to the rower to the to the athlete and then from there uh there's a certain criteria that you're also supposed to video yourself and as like as if in a real world kind of situation where you are uh, you're actually putting together your lesson plan of how you specifically would teach the rowing stroke. Uh, you also pretty much the way how when I when I'm I tell people I want I want to know three things. I want to know how to row properly. So I want you to show me how to row properly, mm-hmm. and then the second thing is I want you to show me how to row improperly that you actually recognize improper rowing. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is I want you to prescribe to me how you would correct the improper rowing to get Mm. the proper rowing. So there's three things. So that's how I'm like, just to boil it down, just the three things where I'm critiquing someone when they're sending me their their videos uh, Mm -hmm. to to get their normal certified instructor level. That's what I, I'm like, that this way, that's the three criteria that I'm looking for. And that's what I want to see in those videos. And sometimes the videos can be a half an hour, 45 minutes long of those three different things. And then I'll send a video back uh, when they submit their video, they'll send it, I'll, I'll critique it, watch it, send a video quick, usually a, a minute or two video back to them, showing them like, all right, this is good, this is bad. I'll take little clips of their video and I'll you know, edit it and say, this is good, or this, is, mm-hmm. this could be better. And then I'll have, and they'll resubmit usually after the, the second submission is usually a five minute video of them correcting themselves. And then we'll go back and forth a couple, a couple of times like that. And usually within three or four exchanges, then they have my uh, seal of approval. And then I, I tell uh, Sarah or uh, Cassie, who are the, who are the, the master, master instructors, I guess, the yeah. ones who are over me. And I'm like, all right, they have my seal of approval. Uh, 
you know, just dot the T's and dash the I's or whatever it is. And <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they'll give the final certi certificate and make sure that I'm uh, all their uh, check boxes are checked. So. Got it. Okay. But yeah, it is all a right. pretty, yeah. it's not, it's not just a, you know, all right, fill out this test. And there is actually yeah. also a test involved as well. Uh, so yeah, after the, after the class, there's a written test and also uh -huh. a video, the video submission piece of it too. So it's, man, it's quite That's the, intense. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the master instructors are all there to help. Uh, we're not mm -hmm. like jerks or anything like that. We, we want everyone to succeed. Uh, yeah. We're there to, you know, to support right. the certified instructors. And even when they become certified, if, if they want to reach out and they have more questions or if they have like a type of client that like, you know, it's uh, some uh, either a elderly or someone with like a, like a, a bad knee or a bad mm -hmm. whatever, or some kind of, they want some kind of further uh, question answer kind of stuff where we're always more than open to support yeah. the community. So yeah, it's a pretty tight community. Yeah, it does. It, it does. I like to hear that. It seems very supportive, you know, that like, you're not, you're not out to, you know, get them, you're there to support them, you know, because ultimately, sure. I mean, I don't want to speak for you or for any of those guys, but it's like, you're there to further, you know, the, the growth of rowing in general. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, then what do you do like with row to fit? I know you have a couple of different services. So what, what are those? So my, I guess right now I have two main services that are seem to be blossoming more than the other ones. Pretty much one is the, uh, if an adult or whoever wants to get into rowing, they just bought a Concept 2 or any kind of rowing machine. I'm not, I'm not specific to con Concept 2, but I, the, the rowing stroke is the rowing stroke, whatever you're rowing on. It doesn't, so it's all the same. But so if you just, that's why I kind of say more the rowing machine or the machine kind of mm -hmm. rather than the erg or concept two, because it's more, I try and make it more general, more yes. you know, welcoming to everyone, even though I have certain uh, biases, biasness towards. We'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> towards a particular <laughs> piece of equipment. <laughs> well, yeah. So right now the two, my one main uh, clientele I have is someone who just, wants to get healthy and wants to move and doesn't want to get stagnant in the second half of life and wants to like, you know, for wellness and overall, overall health and well-being. Uh, they just bought a rowing machine and they want to make sure that they're doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. So usually I would spend in typically that uh, it's a learn to row kind of a thing where it's yes. typically about 90 minutes. Uh, and I teach you as if you're my mother who has mm -hmm. never sat on a rowing machine ever before where it's 101 and then I bring you through everything. I it takes only 90 minutes for me to tell you what I know. And then yeah. that's it. That's all I know. So it's, yeah. it's relatively quick. It de depends on how many questions or how in depth the, uh, the client is who want who more questions, the longer it's going to be. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's not. And typically it's one meeting. It's my, uh, I'm not really out to make life long clients and sucking people of their money and draining their wallets. It's just, this is how you row. It's not rocket science. And then even right. for that, even for that, I mean, if, if they want to, I tell them if they want to every once in a while, a week or a month or however long, if they want to send me a video of themselves, it'll just, all I need is 60 second video. They're like, Andrew, how's this looking? Am I progressing? I'm like, yep. Yeah, it's looking good here, and you could do a little bit better here. Your your body swing should be this, or your your catch should be that, or whatever it is. So I'll even at the my uh, support for all my clients are always there, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a pretty open communication. So that that's one uh, client I'm I have. If we want to do a second or a third, just a you know meeting, that's cool. I have no problem meeting as much as they want to meet. Also, so it's not one and done. If mm -hmm. it's up to them. So my second type of client it has been kind of kind of exploded just from word of mouth here in the Tampa area is uh, the rowing community, like on the water communities, kind of even with the high schools have just exploded because it's year long, 12 month, 365 day a year rowing 
opportunity. There's no winter here. So it's the water is always water. It's never ice. <laughs> So, <laughs> even though us Floridians might feel cold, it's nothing compared to what you used to do up in New York, right? It's 75 degrees outside. I'm wearing long sleeves. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. So it's, uh, but yeah, so the high school uh, is kind of exploded for me just from word of mouth where, and where it's kids who like, you know, freshmen, sophomore, even juniors and seniors who want to get a little bit, like a little bit more of an edge on their time mm -hmm. uh, for the 2K, because that's a big thing for just being placed on a boat. And also that's one thing colleges look for also is a, your 2K time. So just for, and, and typically the, like here in, in Tampa, the typical team is 40 to 60 people. Wow. So having one or two coaches coaching that many kids, they don't really get the one-on-one -on -one time too much. Yeah. So that's actually one thing that I get feedback from the parents and also from the, from the kids is that they've learned more in the 90 minutes from me, just the, being the specific, like just the, the tips and just the fine tuning of their stroke than they have all season from being on their, on their water team. Mm -hmm. So a, I'm, a lot of my uh, rowing instruction on the, on the rower on the indoor rower also is applied to on the water as well. I teach as if it's, it's the same, the same technique on the water. I mm -hmm. teach on the indoor rower this way. It's, it's, it goes back and forth. It just, and that just only, that goes back from my experience from my fifth year of college coaching on the water, you know, right. Rower. So that, that's what my focus and my goal is, is to get this individual on the water. And that's just his, uh, that has just come with me during my coaching career. Yeah. So that, that's, that's the second type is the, and they, they have also, uh, the high school rowers also substantially dropped their splits from, from rowing with me. And typically they aren't just a one or two, uh, client. Usually they, they, especially during the off season, I almost mm -hmm. become a training partner for them where I'll row, I'll row alongside of them with my machine and they'll have their machine at home or wherever we're rowing with them. And I'll stay a couple of clicks right behind, right below them. This way they can chase me. So I'll pace myself mm. off of what, what they should be doing. I'll look at their split and they'll, I'll be there next to them just out of, just out of reach for them. This yep. way they have me to, to chase down the, to, uh, for their 2k and also with them is a lot of it's also mental of like how to uh race plans and not how not to fly and die where typical high school they would just go full tilt right out the gate yes. and then by the first 500 meters they'll be dying and then they have 1500 <laughs> meters to go i'm like no buddy <laughs> <laughs> that's not the way to do it no you don't want to do that no so like let's like, say so if they have uh whatever their goal is for easy math math if they want to get a sub eight minute 2k that's a two minute split yeah so i'd be like all right so it's a lot of training of getting used to the two minute split mm -hmm. where if they want the whatever split they want like whatever time they want for the for the 2k i would train them this way their body is used to maintaining that split so it's a lot of short interval stuff where they might not be ready for the two minute split, but if you if you do two minutes and uh, five hundred meters rather than two thousand meters, their body gets used to that uh, two minute split. Yeah, and then it just increment like slowly like I would decrease the rest time, and increase the working time. This way, eventually they get to the two the, the eight minute two k, and it's 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 uh, kind of an easy way of not too complicated way of getting them their time that they want. And it also teaches them how to maintain their, uh, maintain their breathing and kind of like listening to their body. Cause that's one thing when I was, when I was at your gym, that's one thing a lot of people said to me is that my pacing is pretty much spot on mm -hmm. where if you tell me to do a 20 minute wad and so much, so much stuff to get done. I'm like, and it's a, it's a 20 minute AMRAP. And yeah, this is how many you need to do. That's it takes me 20 minutes. 
to do that yes. however many I need to do. That's it. No more, no less. <laughs> 1959.9. <laughs> exactly. So that's so that's that also teaches how to pace like yeah. the, the pacing of it and the mental toughness of it is uh, also I, the mental piece I, I teach as well. Yeah. Specifically to high school kids. So, okay. So you've got the, what I love, what you called like learn to row. And then you've got the, you know, primarily it sounds like the high school, like avatar. Um, and another one, and I can just speak personally, you know, from my experience at my gym is you would, you would teach, you know, at a gym, you know, whatever it's a CrossFit gym or any other kind of micro gym, but basically if they use rowing in workouts, like that's kind of another thing where you'd go in, um, can you talk a little bit about what, what that looks like, you know, layout perspective? Yep, absolutely. Yep. That's the third time I've done a bunch of these, uh, one at your, your gym and then a few other gyms in the area where pretty much I run it like a novice level high school or novice level college crew practice mm -hmm. where the, like the entry level is novice. That's, and then you get JV and then varsity. So I run the same thing, the, the same clinic as if, it, as if you're going through coup practice where I teach the different pieces of the stroke individually. Also my kind of methodology of teaching the rowing stroke is different than just arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms, where it's, that it kind of muddles it up kind of, uh, mm -hmm. if you're teaching it like that way, I've, ex I've found, so just the way I teach it, especially to large groups is I get everyone moving all together. And I teach the, how the arms move specifically and how the body and the legs don't move uh, and then make sure everyone's down with that. And then I typically what I've seen is then people just go roll right into the arms and body and then teach those two movements together. And then they roll from there into full stroke rowing, whether it's arms, body and legs all at once, mm -hmm. where that kind of gets people to move all three body parts all at the same time where I, when I'm teaching it, I teach arms alone and legs and body swing are isolated. And then I, once everyone gets that movement, then I teach body swing alone where mm. arms and legs are isolated. And then I teach legs alone, arms and body swing are isolated this way. And then I incorporate with, with I have got three different types of drills that mm -hmm. works well with putting those, all those things together. Uh, I don't use the pick drill, which is the arms, arms, heresy, body, Andrew, heresy. Arms, body, legs. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. Uh, it's that's fine. I actually use that like maybe as a warm up, like, but it's as once someone shows me that they could properly move through the rowing stroke, mm -hmm. that's when I use the pick drill because then they, they don't move multiple pieces of the body together at the same time because right. then they'll understand how it's the three it's it's not arms and body and legs it's arms body legs kind of you know it has to be so it's that that group clinic teaches those those three body parts cascading together into one fluid movement and then from there i'll do the drills and then from the drills we'll do uh different types of I, one thing also that I've learned from you can row too, is that they like the four minute, the four minute piece, because it's, uh, that'll be like the, the end or like the, the topping off of the, the clinic will be a four minute, uh, sprint or like a long row just to see at the end of it to, for people to see how their movement has, uh, improved. And typically my biggest, my the, the most common feedback from a clinic is like they people would say I've never real I've never thought that the rowing stroke could be as fluid and as effortless as it feels, because uh, that and that then that's what I teach just how to fluidly move from the catch to the finish mm -hmm. through the drive to the recovery. Just it's just a fluid movement and it should be effortless and. Uh, that's the, that's the greatest appreciation that people have to for feedback with me for those clinics. And then that could be applied to, yeah, to, the, to, to the wads and to the, any kind of programming where the rowing machine is part of it, because mm -hmm. 
the rowing machine when put in the wad isn't i don't consider it part of the wad usually it's a buy-in or it's something yes. where that it's supposed i've to been like, guilty of that yeah and it's 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 meant to tire you out and then the workout starts yeah and if you could row through the stroke without getting tired but still being effective it's like you're you're uh you're what's it, you're glitching the system or whatever it is you're completely yeah. whoever just programmed that that wad you just completely threw that whole all right i'm all right i'm gonna get them tired there's yeah. none of that you're like you just completely like negated that and you're like all right you, you get off the rowing machine fresh and that's what at like 5 30 in the morning i would get off like for the for the uh the times that i would work out at the gym there i would get off the rowing machine fresh and then i would start doing toes to bar or wall whatever. balls or whatever it is and mm -hmm. I'm like all right that was a warm-up i'm like let's <laughs> everyone else is dying yeah, like right, what's going yeah. on with this guy did right. he short it <laughs> right exactly yeah but yeah but i and uh but the thing is i might not have been the first one off the rowing machine i was maybe a second or two behind like the whoever would might have been taller or stronger than me who was just built better than i am on the rowing mm -hmm. machine uh they weren't they weren't rowing fluid and they were tired but I yeah. wasn't. And then I would just, I would just progress past them during the wad. And, you yeah. know, I would, and then you also have all, everyone all flopping around and, and breathing and gasping for air. Like, you know, <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, I just, at the end of it, I would just take my, my sip of water. And I'm like, all right, time to go. go. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's, I was never really one of those kind of uh, crossfitters either. The ones that are just like you know gasping for air because I would be able to pace myself and yeah and there was no like I know what I could do and I would just do that is what I would do. It's good, man. All right, uh, I I have a, a couple of other questions uh, that I wanted to ask and we sort of touched on this earlier and I said we'd come back to it. Um, if I want to learn to row and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to invest in a machine. There, I remember when. <clears throat> um, we first got rowers at the gym, like concept two is the only one that made one. And now it's, I mean, you've got the hydro ones, you've got the, the water like, ones. Uh, yeah, you, you're, there's just a bunch ones. Now. Yeah. Got Peloton ones, you've got Nordic yeah. track ones, you've got. So there's... which, which type of rower should someone buy if they're looking to get into it? First thought comes to mind. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, concept two is the is the gold standard. I mean, it's it's what all the world records are based off of. It's bulletproof. It's mm -hmm. relatively inexpensive, comparatively speaking, to other pieces of gym equipment. Uh, you'll have it forever. I've I've had Bridezilla for more than fifteen years. Uh, she's you know, and I've had no no maintenance. I just came. She came with a PM three. I've upgraded the PM5, which is the monitor, and that's all yep. it is. It's just a better backlight, and it's just got Bluetooth kind of stuff. So, but everything else, all the guts, everything else is all the same. You'll you'll have it forever. Uh, the biggest complaint with the Concept Two is the noise level of the air. Mm. Uh, the air impeller i remember you told me this and like it just yeah. blows my mind i never thought about it because yeah. like you know the the gym is a loud loud place so it's like the rowing it doesn't seem to me to be all that loud but go yeah. ahead i'm sorry yep not a problem uh, the the and for me in my gym or on the side of the road where i decide to pull over and just do a quick 2k as i'm driving around town with my with my machine in the back seat. <laughs> oh, that would be a great viral video, actually. Yeah. Like, oh, there's oh, Andrew on the corner of yeah, Fowler Avenue just doing his 2K. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but so, <laughs> so like if uh, typically like the the quieter machines, like the water, the water rower is the mm -hmm. typically the quieter or the, the magnetic resistance ones uh, are good for like apartments or duplexes okay. or kind of like where you're kind of city kind of stuff where like I, I wake up quarter to five in the morning and I do mm -hmm. my, my exercise five o'clock in the morning when most of, most people are, if I was in an apartment, they would probably hate me if I was on my concept two in the morning, just yeah. revving along for half an hour worth of constant 
Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. So it's they they would that's where the, okay. the noise level would come in hand, come in uh, come in play. But other than that, is the only reason why I would recommend anything other than a concept too. So that's unless it. you're uh, in an apartment and not inconsiderate, um, concept two. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Right. What you you as you briefly mentioned this, uh, you've had that one for 15 years. I know we've had ours, the bulk of ours, for 11 years. Um, but in terms of you, you know this intimately, much more so than I do. Like, what's maintenance like for the, like, what do you what do you do to keep it up? Because yours sits in the garage. For those that aren't aware, Florida is hot and humid and gross. So, um, what do you do for maintenance? The uh, three big things for maintenance is one is keeping the rail clean uh i was planning on the rail for those of us that aren't driving around with a rower in the back what the seat slides on got it okay it's a rail (laughs) (laughs) okay (laughs) so that you want to keep that clean because uh also so i was thinking about putting a video together of like you know just to answer this question about the the three pieces of maintenance so you want to keep that clean you only want to use glass cleaner on that you want to use uh no, nothing that leave a sticky residue at all. So no antibacterial, no soapy stuff. You just want okay. clean glass cleaner. You want it as it. clean as a window is how, you know, so, so that's, and you do that uh, whenever it's dirty. I usually, I probably do that once a week uh, okay. with all the sweat and dirt and everything that, that happens on it. Uh, if you want to do it every time, if you're super particular, do it every time after every rowing session. Usually, so, and then the second piece of maintenance would be the chain to mm-hmm. use any kind of typical three-in-one bike chain kind of oil. Okay. It, it is a bike chain, so you just take care of it just as well as you would on your bicycle. Where probably about once a month, uh, you want to get, uh, just want to get like a rag, drop some three-in-one oil on the rag, and then wrap the rag around the chain and hold on to the chain and then just pull the handle as you're, as you're yeah, pulling okay. the chain through your hand. It just has to be a light, light, uh, light surface coating of the oil. You don't want it to be as you're, as you're rowing, you don't want to have oil spraying back in your face. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good thing. Okay. Less is, less is more. And okay. if, and so, yeah, you just want to keep it lubricated this way. It's not, you'll, after a while, if you forget to lubricate it monthly, you'll hear, it depends how often you use it. You'll hear that it's starting to sound grindy or dirty, yeah. or, you know, yeah. you could tell that it's, it's due for some oil and that's typically okay. all. And usually that oil will also get into the, it'll, as the chain is uh, going around the sprocket that's inside there, that oil will also drip down into the bearings and into the internals of the, of the flywheel and of the, of what, what's actually spinning. Mm-hmm. So that's really all you need to do with that. And usually depending also the third piece of maintenance is to, you need to you want to open up the flywheel and pull out the screen, like pretty much disassemble the, the damper the whole casing of it and clean either vacuum it out or or blow it out with some kind of uh like the keyboard cleaner like the air mm-hmm. cleaner and a, air in a can stuff because what that does as you, there's something called drag factor where with the damper uh 10 is open and one is closed and open you have more air pumping through but if on the way out as the air is getting thrown out the sides of the impeller the, if there's more dust in those little holes of the screen on the flywheel casing, that creates more restriction. So it's as if you could have the damper open at 10, but if there's nowhere for the air to go, it's as if the damper's down at one. Oh, so, okay. So you want to clean the screen and that's where drag factor comes in, where even though you have like brand new machine is let's say a drag pack uh, where the damper is up at 10. It's, uh, feels like a 10 where the drag factor could be, let's say 200, where as it gets dirty, Mm -hmm. the machine will start feeling like it's at a one because you're, you're 
your uh, screen is getting dirty and the restriction of airflow is becoming, becoming greater. So it's as if the damper's at one and the drag factor is showing, even though the damper's at 10, but you just have a dirty screen, the mm. drag factor could be showing like E. So if your drag factor- I always in, wondered what that was, the drag factor. Right. Yeah. And typically, like if you're going to a gym or like a hotel, I've, ne- I've only seen one hotel. That's the first thing I look at whenever I go to a hotel. I check out That's the wellness thing. room. I'm like, <laughs> if there's no concept to, I'm like- You're not I'm wasting dis- your time. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and no but if you ever do, Yeah. If you ever do go to a gym or a hotel where there is a concept too, and you put it at a 10, let's say, or any, or like, let's say at your home machine, you're used to a three. Mm-hmm. Let's say, I'm, I always roll on my dampers at a three, my drag factor is at a at, is at 100 is what I like to roll at. So if I go, I put my, if I put that machine in the hotel or at the gym at a three, and it feels like it's, I'm rowing in an 80, then I'll, I'll check my drag factor and my, and the drag factor of the machine, it calculates how much uh-huh. air is actually being pumped with the load that's going yeah. to the machine. So if the, if the impeller isn't loaded up of what it should be, then it's showing gotcha. an 80. And then that's when you just need to open up the at, at your machine at home, you wrote a three, a new machine at the gym, at the gym, you might need a six or a seven. This way you still get that hundred, for me, a hundred drag factor. Uh, there's also 120, everywhere up to 150. Uh, people yeah. like the heavier load, heavier load drag factor. So that's, that's what drag factor is. And that's why it's important for you to clean that screen. Typically four to six months is what I, what I would recommend okay. just to keep that clean. The R's are due then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Mark James. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned monitors earlier that you, the one upgrade you've done for yours is to go from the PM three to a PM five. Uh, and right. the big difference there is the backlighting and all that, but yep. is, is there a, a specific monitor setting that you would recommend for people to use when they're rowing? Like, do you like one more than the other? I mean, there's, there's like, it shows the graph every time yep. the pace, like there's a bunch of different ones. There's five different screens with the, with the pace and the graph. And then also the force where every time you take a stroke, it, it paints the, your force pounds or whatever it is yep. for each stroke. And you can see it. So there's that. I like when I row, I've got three different monitors going because of the Bluetooth. I'm able to, I'm able to use my iPad as one thing. And then my, mm-hmm. my iPhone is another thing. So I have three, I have three different. So it's my, I like to put my monitor itself as the uh the curve okay okay i like to put my ipad as my the more detailed where there's like 20 different things that that the actual like the monitor is showing the more specific stuff i have that so i have them so i have that on my ipad and then on my iphone i have an h uh polar h10 heart rate monitor Mm -hmm. around like one of those chest monitors I have that on my phone is logged in on that showing my, my heart rate graph and stuff. So for, and that's all Bluetooth in. That's why I wanted the PM five because I was able to do multiple things with the heart rate monitor and mm-hmm. with the PM three, it, it wasn't, it wasn't anywhere near as user-friendly as the, for that, for the blue, the Bluetooth is the main reason why I wanted the, the yeah. PM five. So yeah, I have, that's kind of like ground zero. It's like Houston, we have a problem kind of like, uh, you know, mission control of what I have going on with all my different that is. Uh, yeah. outlooks of stuff that all my feedback stuff that when I'm rowing, but I like the, I also like to do on my monitor, the, uh, a re-row is what it's called. Uh-huh. So like let's say I do a 30 minute, uh, 30 minute piece and I average whatever I average at. And if I wanted to re-row myself in that previous uh, session that I did last week or whatever, I would re-row myself in that session. And there's that there's the two boats that you can you know race against. Yes, so yeah. You could, you could race against yourself from last week, and the, the the pace boat will be you from last week, and then you could race against yourself. So like, if my two k time was uh, was six thirty four. And I mm-hmm. wanted to get that sub 6.30 2K, then yeah. I would row against my 6.34 self in that pace boat. And I would 
I would use that as uh, motivation to row against myself. So I, there's also times where instead of that force graph that I, that yep. I like, I would also row against myself from my previous I, session. I never knew that the re-row function could do that. Like you could use that for the pace boat. I always just use it for like, ah, oh, let me repeat this interval or something like that. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so this is one I've, I've had a lot of discussions with coaches on over the years and, um, nobody can seem to come to an agreement on this. So I got to bring it to the expert is, is there a specific technique that you would recommend for like starting? So three, two, one, go, I'm on the rower. I've seen the, I just row, you know, there's no strategy whatsoever. I've seen like the, for, if you can't see what I'm doing, maybe I can, uh, um, verbalize it a little better, but it's like, all I'm doing is pulling with the arms, like, you know, 500 miles an hour until I just start to get going. Or I've also heard take a half stroke, a three quarter stroke, and then a full stroke. And then I'm into my pace. Is there a strategy for when you start off on the rower? I have my strategy. And then yeah. I also have a recommendation for other people. To, like, as you just said, there's half a dozen different strategies. Yeah. So the best thing I could do, I would recommend to do is try each one of them out, do a hundred meters, like just, just test each one of them out mm. and see which one works best. Historically, the best way, like, uh, in the, on the bell curve of strategies, the one that's on the top is that most likely would work is, was the one that you were saying that you want to do. You're sitting at the catch, you know? but your legs aren't full compression. Your legs are more like 90 degrees or like half. We call it, we call it half with the legs, but mm -hmm. your body is still over and your arms are still extended. So you pretty much, you do legs only for two strokes. So it's legs and also the body swing and the, and the arm pull, but you do two halves, a three quarters and then a full. And then it's called lengthen out where it's kind of, I have a, I'm planning on putting another video out where it's called a suspension drill or a sticky catch drill where it's not mm -hmm. so much, you're not kicking, you're not kicking with your legs, but it's more like a squeeze where it's a lengthen out uh, is more like a squeeze with the legs. And then by the time you take your fifth stroke, that's when you're full hundred percent rowing all out. Uh, you're kind of already at your pace at that point. Right. So usually yeah. typical starts that I, that I for myself have worked best and what I recommend and to other people mostly and what other people are is most uh, successful for most people is that half, half, three quarter lengthen full. Okay. And then, so those first five strokes and then you just, that's when you do your power 20. <laughs> <laughs> And then you settle out is what it is. Uh, so by typically the 30th stroke is when you're, when you're 300 meters into the, your first 500 and then you uh -huh. start the race plan. So, yeah. And then you're in it. Yep. You go into your uh, dark, dark cave, <laughs> the pain cave. When's the last time you wrote a 2k? Uh, I try not to. <laughs> is that that's like that's like the, the when you do that one it's like you right. you can't separate like just the oh i'm just gonna do a nice easy right. 2k yeah. it's like yeah. you could do a nice easy 2500 or a nice easy 1500 right. but like Correct. if yep. somebody says hey let's row 2000 meters it's it's uh, it's, been a, it's, it's been a while uh yeah it's not fun i don't i don't do it for fun i would <laughs> do it like so so like there's <laughs> one of the local teams here that, that i've like the recreational teams that i've rode with to get onto boats for that, we would just like, you know, just to see what we would do. Uh, but for that, even that's mostly like, we would do 1000 meter pieces for that. We, we haven't really done a 2000 meter piece. Uh, so my, yeah, my, but my most recent 1000 meter piece was, uh, what was that? 340? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 340, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, this one comes up a lot. Is there a different strategy in rowing for calories versus meters? Yes. So there's three things, actually. There's calories, meters, and watts. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the watts, it was explained to me more. Like before, like this is also something that's kind of like uh, been really nice 
for the being master instructor uh, that not only do I teach the students, but there's times where the students teach me as well. So the one time that here we brought up the Watts, uh, this is more for people who are accustomed to spin class type stuff. Mm -hmm. That's all that that is. So it's, it's yep. their language. Uh, it's that, that's what they communicate with is Watts. So also you can get your max Watts. And then if the instructor, wherever says, all right, drop down to 75% of your max Watts, easy math. You know, if a watt is a watt where if you're doing a split where let's say your, your target split is two minutes, 45 minutes, 45 or 75% uh, of two minutes isn't a minute 45 because if anything, that's 150%. That's not 75%. Right. So it's yeah. completely opposite. So if yes. anything, and like, how do you do like, you know, two minutes split, 75% of that is, I guess, 230 is that? I don't know. I have no yeah. idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's so not that, an easy that, equation. That's yeah, but, for sure. But then, but if you're doing your 2K and, or whatever, whatever, you know, meter piece you're doing, you, your split is there to pace your, yep. for that piece. So now calories has been more, uh, I guess, brought into light from CrossFit. Is more yep. the, that that's what CrossFit more uses than anything else. And uh, the way how I would differentiate of attacking a calorie wad versus a split wad or a meter wad is that the calories, my understanding of the PM5 monitor, that it calculates acceleration of the flywheel for calories. Mm. So that's why when you put it on a 10, the damper on a 10, you, you're able to burn more calories faster because between strokes with a damper wide open on a 10, on the recovery, that air load going through the impeller restricts the impeller and slows it down faster. Mm -hmm. So you, you're not like freewheeling as, or coasting. There's no coasting of the flywheel out of 10 because the, the air is wide open. So during the recovery, the flywheel slows down mm -hmm. and then your next pull, it accelerates up again. So that acceleration throughout the drive is what the calories are, are uh, calculating where on split or Watts, it's just meters road is all it is. Mm -hmm. So, so it doesn't, that piece of it, the way it calculates it is just your stroke length and, uh, and the, the power applied to it more so and not so much acceleration so for the calorie piece of it i would i would definitely i would attack the calorie type wad different than the split or the uh the watt type wad got it with okay. that in mind with the acceleration in mind yeah okay um i have two final questions and these are more yeah. fun questions okay it's been um, fun. Every question so far has been fun. <laughs> I know. When, when you, you love <laughs> running. Um, what is your best ever 2K? Best ever 2K was in college. was a 634.6. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. And that's not even, I was one of the smaller, I'm like, I'm, I'm six foot two. Yeah. I stopped growing in junior high, of, junior year of high school. I stopped yeah. growing. So I've been this height since I was 17 or whatever, yeah. 16, 17. So through college, six foot two is considered short. Yeah. And uh, so I had guys all around me pulling like 620, 615, and I was like 634. And it's, uh, it was humbling. Good grief. <laughs> That's not even a good time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. Last one. Is it true? Uh, you don't drive your camera anymore, but is it true? Okay that you went car the car you chose you chose because it would fit your rower in the back comfortably my number one criteria for college was rowing uh -huh. my number one criteria for my car was bridezilla <laughs> <laughs> i can just imagine you going like lot to lot like right. can you open up the back please okay let me see does this right. thing fit in there yeah yeah, yeah. right yes Yep, exactly. Um, 
see, this is anytime somebody says like, Hey, I've got rowing questions. Like Andrew, that's the guy that you need to talk to. Yeah. No, nobody else. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone comes up to me with. Uh, If people want to reach you, (laughs) if people want to reach you, what's the best way they can do it? Uh, row to fit.com. It's just the word, no spaces, row, numeral two, fit. So it's row to fit.com. And then the, uh, my contact me stuff's in there, phone numbers in there, Mm -hmm. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the same row to fit, all that stuff, all road to fit. Yep. Awesome. Andrew, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to uh, many more conversations on rowing. Yep. Pleasure here as well. Thanks, Josh. All right, man. Take care. All right. Catch you later.